Hello and warm welcome to the 2010 Hansbury FIM World Superbike Championship. Jonathan Green reporting from round five from Northern Italy, just outside of Milan at the famous Monza Circuit. Monza is steeped in motor racing history and in fact was the third permanent circuit ever to be built after Brooklyn's in the UK and Indianapolis in the USA. The circuit itself is nestled within the confines of the Royal Park and it truly is a majestic setting for a motor race as the bikes reach over 200 miles an hour as they hurtle through the famous woods on the 5.7 kilometer track. Known as the Cathedral of Speed, Monza is all about being fast in a straight line with its long, straight and fast curves that allow for slipstreaming on every lap. Often races are far from decided as they dive into the famous Parabolica last lap and Monza has over the years been the site of some of the closest race finishes in the history of the sport. World Superbikes also welcome to the championship this weekend one of the most famous names in two-wheel racing, Yoshimura of Japan on a Yoshimura-prepared Suzuki, who will race in three wildcard races this year at Monza, again at Imola, and at Magni Corps at the end of the season. Yoshimura have raced around the world and were last in the championship back in 1989. Here's Steve Martin to tell us more about this famous Japanese motorcycle name. This week, we're lucky enough to have Yoshimura joining us for the first time since 1989 in the World Superbikes. Last time they were in Japan and they won. This time it's their first time in Europe here at Monza. And uh, I just want you to have a look at everything that they've bought with them so that they can compete this weekend. Exhaust pipes down here, uh, we've got a spare engine. Um, we've got the rider here, Sakai. It's his first time here in Japan. Say hello to the camera, please, Sakai. And also, the grandson, Kato, please wave to the camera. Yep. This is uh, Pop Yoshimura's grandson, and he's the team manager of the team. Tires on tire warmers, ready to go. Come through the front and let's have a look at the bike. This is the bike itself. Have a look at this fuel tank. This is actually made by Yoshimura. You can see the logo there. They use this in their eight hours. You can see the twin um, uh, holes in the front for the, the pipes. This exhaust pipe also made by Yoshimura, all the foot pegs and everything, covers, um, brackets, basically this bike starts off as a road bike and they turn it into a race bike and that is why Yoshimura is such a, a great company to buy the parts from. Have a look up here, see this flag? All the uh, employees at Yoshimura in Japan have signed this to wish everybody here good luck for the meeting and they're all here because of this man up here, Pops Yoshimura. The championship leader coming into round five was still Leon Haslam, who'd led since round one at Phillip Island. But this weekend, he would be under enormous pressure from the Italian Aprilia and Ducati teams, who both wanted to win at home in Italy, as well as the current world champion Yamaha team, who built their bikes just a mile from the circuit. Haslam led by 20 points going into round five, with Italian Max Bianchi in second place, 20 points behind. All eyes were on Biaggi then as the Aprilia is known to be super fast in a straight line and they would be favourite for the race wins. And right from Super Pole, they didn't disappoint the expectant home crowd as Max Biaggi clocked over 330 kilometres per hour around the famous circuit. And also clocked the fastest top speed ever for a motorcycle around Monza and claimed Aprilia's first ever pole position. It wasn't as easy as it sounds as Yamaha's Cal Crutchlow was just a few hundredths of a second behind to take a front row start with last year's winner Fabrizio in third and double winner last time out Jonathan Ray on a Honda rounding out the top four. Championship leader Leon Haslam would start from the inside of row two behind his arch rival Max Biaggi. So with an Italian on pole position on an Italian bike, the scene was set for Biaggi to claim an historic victory for Aprilia at home. But at 200 miles an hour, nothing is ever that simple. The rest of the field were just as keen to make a bit of Monza history themselves. Fabrizio won here last year and was out to do the same. Jonathan Ray won twice at Assen and was ready for more. Let's head to the start then of race one, round five. Go the lights, away they go, and Biaggi gets a flyer again. Crutchler goes in pursuit, the Kawasaki's go round the outside. Bermulen got a good start, so too did Hager. He's in the mix, but it is all Biaggi as we head to the first corner. 
Well, one of the Kawasaki's, I think that was Roger Lee Hayden going wide. His brother's here too. Clean, everybody's clean through the chicane. That's a good, good sign. Good start by Sykes as well. And Ruben Zouse is right up there, but look at Corset from the third row. Corset's got a flyer again, but it's all chasing Biagi through Curva Grande and Della Roccia for the first time. Hard on the brakes as Haslam's got away well too. Brock, Out of Ascari they go. Brock Parks has got a ride through penalty. Uh, I guess he must have jumped the start because they said no jump starts unless he's... Well, he'll no. probably miss one of the yeah, chicanes. Yeah, it'll be a chicane. Why. Into Parabolica go the leaders. The Aprilia leading the way at home here in Italy. And in fact, it's Bayocca and Parks that have been given right through penalties. Not the way to start your day. Out of Parabolica, there's the 11. And here comes Carl Crutchlow alongside Fabrizio. And that Yamaha is a screamer. It is fast. They found 10 more horsepower over last year. And uh, that is what uh, Fabrizio has been complaining about. James Toes are going to be looking for a way past now. But you can just see in the middle of the corner there how fast Fabrizio was. Ray is coming and coming fast. And the 52 board is out for James Tozen. And there, look at him go. He's got Camier alongside him now. And the Honda is moving and moving fast. Saus is there too. Look on the BMW. Diving on the inside. Can't quite get Camier. Almost touches his back end there as they come through. Prima variante. Tozen went past Corsa there though. So Corsa in the wars, as he was in Assen, but I think he's up for it. Tozen's still fifth. Fabrizio's dropped to sixth now. And Zaus and Camier are there too. Johnny Ray's last lap, 43.4. Nitro fans, Hargett is in 14th place. That's not good enough for his school report. Ray is uh, actually really impressive. Though. He's got a lot of traffic to get through, and he's uh, making his way well up the field. You remember he ran off uh, a lap ago. Long way to go in this race, but Haslam's Haslam. made his move and he goes up the inside of Parabolica. Crowd go crazy. Tozen's gone through on the crutch low as well. Ah, but he went wide, did Haslam there, and through goes the Italian again. But look, he's going to get the slipstream effect now as they come past the start finish straight now. And Biagi leads, but for how long? Yeah, what Suzuki need to do is they need to set that bike up for the braking area. Go. Look at that. And he's braked a little bit later than Biagi. G28. And he's done favor. it. Oh, great stuff from Haslam. They certainly teach that at the Ron Haslam School. <laughs> We're getting close to that uh, magical 330 kilometers oh, an hour. Fabrizio and Corsa side by side as they go through Curva Grande. And I'll tell you what, you've got to be brave to do that. Yeah, that is a massive, massive corner there. Haslam has the lead at the moment. But as that happens, the two Yamahas are getting closer and closer. Yeah, it looks like they've got the Suzuki set up nicely on the brakes, which is what you need to do if, you, if your competitor's got a super fast bike. Uh, <laughs> you've got to have your bike set up so well on the brakes because uh, it's basically the only place that you're going to be able to get in from, and you've got to come from so far back. Looks like they've done that with Suzuki, though. Oh, now look at the Aprilia. Oh, look at the power of that Aprilia as it goes down the main straight. The Yamahas use the slipstream nicely, and Cal Crutchlow and James Tozen are right on song with them now. A four-way battle at the front now through the first turn. What's more mentally tiring, leading or chasing? At the moment, probably chasing, because you're looking for a way past, and you're worrying about the pack splitting open. If, if the pack splits open, you lose that slipstream effect, and it comes down to two. There's that bump again. We just saw Biagi hit it into the Ascari. We've seen people get caught out big time by that in the past. And Ray, again, is having... A very interesting day because he's down in 11th place at one point. Now he's up to six and he's the fastest man on the track. 143.031 that last lap. Camia back there. Zaus is losing ground and Sykes is there. Thumbs up from Yiri, the uh, mechanic for James Tozen. And it is Cole Crutchlow coming up to third place now to join Tozen in the pursuit of Max Biagi. Fabrizio's not out of it, he's right where he needs to be. Johnny Ray's now tagged on to Haslam. Haslam just had a big moment there as he almost went right and clattered into the back of Johnny Ray under braking there, but he's okay. Look yeah. how wide they go, and oh, Fabrizio bounces out of the seat. You can see his head wobbling there in the background as he well. Always does, so he always does, yeah. But uh, look, Haslam up the inside on the brakes. Nice move into Parabolica! Oh, Johnny! Johnny Ray hits Parabolica hard! Oh, over the tyre wall. Oh, he's he's right. okay, thankfully. He's, right. he's rushing back to find a bike. It's gone, mate. mate. Back to the pits for you. Your Red Bull's not giving me any more wings, sir. Back you go. He's gone in so hard. Just see, boom, just folded on the just front. Just a little wider than he wanted to be. Well, there's a few different lines into that corner, Jonathan. It's, uh, it's just a matter of just pushing on the absolute limits uh, and holding the front brake 
just that little bit too long. If he'd have let that front break off a, a tenth earlier, he would have got round there. JT. You can see there the Yamaha uh, can take uh, narrower lines. Oh, another down, that's and that's Sakai. That's Yoshimura. The Yoshimura entry, oh, first that, time. Oh, Whoa. that is a big high side. Oh, clatters oh. down on his back. Oh, that's a big high side. Big star from Japan, yeah. bites the dust, Yanagawa style. It's going to come down, in my mind, Tozlin or even Kotzler at the moment are in the right position. Oh, Tozlin is right to come alongside on the outside. Down, out of Ascari, they come. It's going to come down to breaking into the parabolica. Haslam's going to wipe up the pieces if it all goes wrong, but here comes Tozlin, he's not going to do it. Biashi's going to hold on, Crutcher's going to try and go around the outside, can't do it shortly around Parabolica, he'll try and cut it tight, gets the wiggle on, Biashi's going to win this, Haslam's going to take fourth, and the two Yamahas are going to be on the podium, but it is Aprilia back to winning ways at Monza. Lawrence, who uh, just takes a deep breath in, and Aprilia celebrates, that's their third win of the year. <laughs> this track is, is very long and very easy to to make a little mistake, and plus, you know, when you have your rhythm, you stay with your rhythm, difficult to go faster, or maybe easier to go slower. But anyway, um, I'm happy with the result, and nothing's wrong with the other two and three guys. It was very close. I think uh, the second race will be even closer. But, uh, you know, happy for me, happy for my team, and uh, for Aprilia. We, we work a lot. Everyone predicted that the Aprilia would be fast, but few had expected the two Yamahas to be as strong as they were, as both Crutchlow and Tozlan were on brilliant form at the home of their team. Haslam picked up crucial points for his campaign. And while he still leads the championship, Bianchi's win had narrowed the gap for the title chase. On to race two then, and once again, Biaggi would be the man to beat. But Biaggi sensed that an historic double win was on the offing. He would be giving it everything in the hope of catching Haslam for the lead of the championship. The fans had come to see an Italian victory, but a host of Brits and Troy Corsa were on hand to spoil the party. Race two from Monza then, with everyone chasing the Aprilia. Biaggi on for the double. Away they go, not as good a start this time from Biaggi, but he wheelies into a... A much better lead than he had in race one as they head now down to that first corner. Sykes, Biaggi leads it. Look, look at Sykes. Sykes. What a start. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. Who Lancey's involved. Lancey got a good start. And, uh, He's okay. Three bikes down. Lancey was uh, one of the major causes, and that was almost a repeat of last year. That looked, well, um, let's just wait. Course is up there in second, good to see. And Sykes, Sykes is in there, almost hits the back of Corsa there. <laughs> and he's going for second. He's going for second right now. This not is oh, not quite, but this is much better from Tom Sykes. Leon Haslam is where he needs to be. He's in fourth. But look at Sykes on the Kawasaki. This is fantastic. Kawasaki will be getting a few photos of this, but Haslam up the inside. He'll have a photo of that. Oh, Whoa. and it was almost a photo finish there for Sykes. He almost came off there. Ala. Johnny Ray, who's already down, but look at Corsa challenging Biaggi early on. Now we'll see the power of the Aprilia against the power of the BMW. Watch Lanzi in the back of this, look there. Yeah. Nudging him, it was Hargo who came together with him. And he took Camia too. Yeah, there's a lot of guys got caught up in Now that. watch again, look, boom. boom. Lanzi goes Some... down, but he got nudged by Hargo. <laughs> yeah, but someone clipped, it looks boom. like... Someone clipped James Tozlan's front. Uh, look at Tozlan protecting himself there. Ray's bike just, just <laughs> spinning all over the place. Yeah, I mean, Sykes is in a great position now. Haslam, fastest man, 43.5. Yeah, and Haslam's about to go into second place pass. He'll, I bet you he'll do uh, Corsa under braking here, and he, he will. You know why? Because Corsa has been struggling on the brakes, uh, and that has been his number one problem. Well, leg off, Alarossi, and pass Corsa he goes. That's nice if you can do it. Through yeah. Delaroggia. Well done. Well, Corsa always wide through there. We watched him, um, went out on track and watched him come through there yesterday. And here comes Crutchlow. He's on good form now. 143-1. He was half a second quicker than Haslam last time out. Yeah, Crutchlow knew that record. 42.9 a couple of laps earlier. But interestingly enough, they've dropped Corsa just slightly here at the top three. It's hard to see from that shot, although... Dropped him... Slightly, much. yeah. I mean, he's 0. 0.6. He's way back 0. 0.6 off the lead at the moment. Cami is though coming, coming he fast is. in fifth place, 43.6. Yep, Cami is uh, going to join that group very, very shortly. Harger is in the top six, having started all the way down on the back of the fourth row. 
First Ooh. time he's done that. But what so. he needs to do now is he needs to keep the mid-corner speed through the parabolica. Which he's done. Yeah, but uh, perhaps the Aprilia's a little bit too close. Now let's see what Yamaha can do, because Crutchlow's now eyeing up an, a chop, an opportunity to join Haslam. Here we go, across the line again. There goes the Aprilia before the old finish line. Wow. You can just hear it as it passes our commentary position. It is a missile. Haslam had the lead go for it again and he must start thinking about this because Cal Crutchlow as you can see lining himself up to have the lead himself the worst he can do is finish Whoa. second if he finishes worse than second in this race he's going to lose his uh, championship Crutchlow goes through and so does course almost does Corsa as well but Crutchlow is through into second place now and he'll go in pursuit of Biagian 10 to go has been looking up the inside there but nothing he can do Leon, Leon, Leon! He was not going to be the king of Leon there. Woo. And Lucy, who is Cal's boat, got a little bit worried right then. Oh, I don't want to see Ollie's face then. Yeah, I don't want to see Ollie's face. This is the first time go. Cal's, Cal's going to come past and he's going to be able to see for the first time. Uh, they'll show him the gap. I mean, he's, he'll have a gap of something like uh, 1.6 seconds uh, over the guys behind. When he sees that, he's going to know that it's down to those guys. Camia is a long way off the back of that pack now. Has has gone past Corsa. Camia, wait, Where's wait, Camia wait, 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 still waiting. Well, talking of ending in tears, Cal Crutchlow did not have the best of preparations for this weekend. Because of the volcano, they closed the Isle of Man and he had to take a ferry to Liverpool overnight. He then flew Corsa. from Luton. Corsa goes through on Haslam, fighting hard with these two. Corsa is going to give this everything he's got too because this is for the podium. Corsa is not going to give up a chance in the podium in the BMW at Monza. Crutchlow is also riding with ligament damage to his ankle. He slipped off his push bike uh, in the week and so is suffering from that and still suffering with a shoulder injury. So this is a valiant performance by an unfit Cal Crutchlow but he's hanging on to Biagi. So when he's fit it sounds like he's going to win by 10 seconds. Could do. You just said. Yeah. Haslam not able to gain any ground on this battle, and it is all up to Cal Crutchlow now to stop the rock. Oh, that can help. That little wobble there can sometimes slow the speed of a bike, but once again, look at Cough. that. Nothing you can do about gone. it. Oh, no! no! Cal Crutchlow's gone! Yeah, he's, he's gone bang! He has. He doesn't know it yet. Oh, no, this he is doesn't awful. Know it yet. He does have no idea, and it's all yeah, over. He does. And the bad news is there's oil on the track. There's oil on the track. No, it's well. Get that flag out. Well, that's oh, a real shame. A real, is, real shame. That is terrible news for Crutchlow, but for Troy Corsa, that is good news. And it's good news also for Leon Haslam. Look, there it went bang on the straight. That's a classic. Hang on, you say it's good news for Leon Haslam, but it's good news because if, if uh, Honda can finish, or sorry, if BMW finish, they're going to get their first podium. Haslam won't be worried about that. He's leading the championship, wants to chase Biagi. Haslam won't, but BMW want to get on the podium, my friend. They'll get on the podium if, if um, Corsa can finish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, the pudding at the moment is all Biagi's. And it's looking rather good. Teramasu, if you like, for Aprilia. Looking for the double. I can't see Haslam or Corsa doing anything to stop him. And uh, here we go. Final lap. Haslam in second place, Corsa's chasing him, but it's all about the Italian, on for the double here as he did at Portugal. Here comes Biagi, and Aprilia do the double in Monza! Well, it's fantastic, great weekend for us, for me, for my family, for my team, and uh, be great, you know, for all of us. You know, my team and my boys make a great job. We make a change on the bike on race two, and I, th I think it was the correct one. You know, I was a little bit struggling in race one in some area with this modification. I get a little bit more feeling, and I can push a little bit harder. So it was a little bit tricky to make the change after you win a race, but uh, we knew we'd do something because I wasn't really. Uh, afraid for something, but uh, they give me another extra feeling and I can ride the bike easily in 43 low and uh, I make the difference, so I'm so happy.
Everyone knew the Aprilia would be hard to stop at Monza and its pure straight line speed dominated the day, giving Biaggi a magical Monza double and putting him within three points of the championship lead. Haslam still leads, but the rest of the field are catching fast. BMW took an historic first ever superbike podium and surely their first win is just around the corner. World Supersport, the Hondas dominated qualifying with former world champion Kanan Safoglu taking the pole, followed by the on-form Eugene Laverty, who won last time out at Assen. Championship leader Juan Lascorce of Spain on the Kawasaki would also start on the front row, and the run to the first tight corner would prove crucial. Let's head then to the start of Supersport Round 5. Opposition Safoglu on the right-hand side, his teammate on the inside. Here we go! Ferrari. Good start from Safoglu. Ferrari got a shocker of a start. He completely missed the start from the second row of the grid. As we rush down towards Prima Valiente for the first time, it is going to be, or is it? Oh, one last course drives in, but an even better start. And look at that, somewhere. Eugene Laverty. Eugene Laverty came around the outside and uh, duffed up Safoglu, who I thought had the whole shot. Doesn't anymore. Great start from Eugene Laverty. The Spaniard in front of him. And there's Foray now, moved his way up. Yep, with the triumph behind him. Foray. Moves up to fourth position in front of Davies. Top speed of the triumph, and that has been the problem, 282. It's about five k's an hour slower than the, the Honda of Sofoglu. Sofoglu up to second place with that power on the Honda, and now tries to go in pursuit of Laverty, and Robin that's Harms out. Robin Harms was running in the top six, but now he's out. Yeah, I mean, there's two ways to approach a race here. It's like Laverty is, it doesn't normally work. You can see that bump there, right there. Yeah. It's uh, caught a few people out over the years. Uh, they haven't done anything about it. Uh, everyone's pretty aware of it now. Chaz Davis in fifth place, being chased hard now by Fujiwara on the second Kawasaki. The first one, of course, one last course, is chasing Kenan Safoglu in third place. Laverty dives into Parabolica on the 50. Park, Park Elgar, Honda. Representing, of course, the Portimao circuit. Keep an eye on the times. Laverty last time around 48.2, Sofagli 48.4. So uh, Laverty again 48.2 and Sofagli 48.7. The gap's out now to 1.7 seconds. Impressive. So, uh, it is very impressive by Eugene Laverty. Eugene Laverty looking ever so smooth. Yeah, he's, uh, he was born in the year that I won my first Australian Championship, yeah, 1989, so he's 20 years old, which is a bit sad, really. <laughs> it was 20 years ago. Here we go. Another lap completed almost by this chasing group. Piro's still pulling away from Fujiwara. And Piro's in fifth at the moment, but the battle we're watching is Davis, Rhea and Lagreve. And Rhea's got past Matthew Lagreve. Six laps to go. Well, which is an extremely long time, actually, in Monza terms. It is. It's 48 kilometres. <laughs> yeah, it's a long way. So then, another lap completed, and Eugene Laverty continues with a 1.9 second lead over the rest of the chasing pack. Kenan Safoglu, former world champion, slides it in to the first corner on the Honda. Eugene Laverty is rolling on for the Park Elgar team. Out of Ascari comes. Head down and bum up, but Safog is in trouble. The Scorse is hounding him. See, look at that. See how that uh, Kenan Safog is standing there. He knows the story. He knows. Yep. One last gasp for Lan Scorse, but he's, he's not going to do deep. it. Well, he's gone oh, Kenan's gone in deep. He's deep as he possibly it. can, but held it all together, and he's going to hold on. Oh. He's the ex-world champion. You oh. see that? Big moment. But Eugene Laverty wins in Monza, his third of the year, and Safog hangs on. Yeah, that was to, to lead into the first corner was nice and uh, I was able to make a break, which is difficult riding this track, but to get two wins in a row is, is something I've been wanting for some time. Uh, I, I didn't manage it last year, although this is, I think it's my seventh win. It's uh, my first back-to-back, -back, so a brilliant race to lead from start to finish. Uh, coming into the first corner, I was on the outside and the, the two guys stopped up that bit more. I thought they were going to do the first chicane and I just uh, was able to go out around the outside of them and, and pass them into the left and I just tried to make a bit of a... A break and I read my pit board as seen almost had uh, two seconds and at the end it was a bit difficult I'd been using the rear brake too much and uh, cooked it and uh, I had oil over my foot so I just had to be careful with that 
but I was able just to control it uh, between one and two seconds and Keenan kept me honest though but uh, a big thank you to all the boys last time I forgot to thank the team manager Simon Buckmaster and, and mechanic Ben so thanks to, to everyone in the team Back to back wins for Laverty means that the tussle for the top is even tighter than before and the two Hondas of Laverty and Safoglu are reeling in Las Corsas Kawasaki race by race in Superbikes, it's a similar story, as Haslam Suzuki continues to lead, as he has done all year. But now the gap is just three points between the Brit Haslam and the Italian Biaggi. Next on the calendar, it's the high-altitude Kyle Army, as the Superbike Circus heads to South Africa just one week after Monza. Summer is fast approaching, but the winter's tale of Superbikes has just taken another twist, as the series fight just got closer. Join us next time for all the highlights from Kyle Army. From me, Jonathan Green, until then, goodbye for now. <laughs>